Welcome to this lecture on proper use of error bars. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to use different types of error bars properly. We have already seen in one of the lectures that error bars can be descriptive or inferential or they can be some other quantities too and therefore, error bars are meaningless or they can be misleading if your figure legends does not state what kind of error bars you are using. And therefore, important first take home message is that when you are showing the error bars in your figures, always describe in the figure legend what type of error bar you are using. So, it is a very good idea to use the error bars. However, error bars should be used with caution especially when you are reporting the data from replicate measurements and representative experiment. So, on the next few slides we are going to learn about the meaning of the replicate experiments and representative experiments. Now, let us try to understand the meaning of replicate samples and independent samples. Scientists often handle the wide variation that occur in nature by measuring a number of independently sampled individuals, independently conducted experiments or independent observations and that is called your sample size small n. And therefore, the second very important take home message for you is that the value of small n, the sample size or number of independently performed experiment must be stated in the figure legends. And it is also very important that the sample size n which is the number of independent results is very carefully distinguished from the number of replicates. So, on the next slide we are going to see what is the meaning of replicate experiments. Now, let us try to understand the meaning of replicates with an example. Replicates are nothing but they are the repetition of measurement on one individual in a single condition or multiple measurements of the same or identical samples. Let us consider a lab experiment to determine whether deletion of a gene in mice affects its tail length. Now, there are two options to do this experiment. One can do the experiment in the following way. One can choose one mutant mice and one wild type mice and one can perform 10 measurements of each of their tails. And the second way of doing this experiment is to measure the tail length of 10 wild type mice and 10 mutant mice. Now, question is which one of these two is the correct way of doing this experiment. Now, if you look at the option 1, option 1 cannot answer the central question whether deletion of the gene affects the tail length because there is one wild type mice and one mutant mice and therefore, it does not matter how many times you measure the tail length and therefore, if you want to address this question successfully, you must distinguish the possible effect of gene deletion from natural animal to animal variation and therefore, option 2 is the correct way of doing the experiment because sample size is greater than 1. Now, let us try to understand the meaning of representative experiment and why you have to be careful while re reporting the error bars from representative experiment. Whenever you read some scientific papers, you will find that sometimes a figure shows only the data from a representative experiment. When people say representative experiment, this immediately implies that several other similar experiments were also performed. If representative experiment is shown, then in this case n is equal to 1 and therefore, you should not be showing any error bar and therefore, the third important take home message is that show error bars only for independently repeated experiments and never for replicates. Data from a representative experiment should not have error bars because in such an experiment sample size is 1. We have already seen that there are different types of error bars that one can use in the figures. Now, question is which type of error bars to use when comparing the experimental results. For example, biologists usually try to compare the experimental results with control and therefore, it is usually appropriate to show inferential error bars such as standard error or confidence interval rather than standard deviation when comparing the experimental results with some control. I would like to thank you for your attention.